Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're just gonna be looking at some basic force problems. We're just gonna get our feet wet with some of the basics for forces, including free body diagrams, Newton's second law, and actually solving for whatever variable we wanna solve for. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's the first problem. Let's say I'm pulling a box with mass two kilograms, and I'm gonna be pulling straight to the right with a force of let's say 50 newtons. And what I'd like to know is two things. Number one, what is the acceleration of this box? And number two, what is the speed after five seconds? So to solve this, we're gonna start it the way we start any force problem, and that is with a free body diagram. So you'll notice I already have one force on here, the 50 newtons. I of course have a force of gravity pointing down, which I like to call mg, but you can call it whatever you want. And then we have a force pointing up, which is the normal force, fn. And assuming there's no friction, which I didn't mention friction, so you should assume no friction. These are the only three forces on my diagram. So that's it for the first step. Now, second step, Newton's second law. I like to do Newton's second law in the x direction and the y direction separately, and it's gonna look like this. F net in the X is equal to all the forces pointing to the right minus all the forces pointing to the left. And then we're gonna set that equal to M times A, mass times acceleration. Now, since there's only one force pointing in the X direction, just the 50 Newtons, this becomes really easy for us. It's just 50 minus zero. You technically don't even have to write the minus zero. And then that's equal to the mass, which is two times the acceleration, which we're solving for right now. So to easily solve this, 50 equals 2a, divide by two, and we'll get an acceleration of 25 meters per second squared is the units of acceleration. That's the first part. The next part was I wanted to find the speed after five seconds. If I wanna do that, it's simple. I'm gonna have to use kinematics, meaning I'm gonna write down my five kinematic variables V initial, V final, acceleration, time, and displacement, delta x. Let's assume we're starting from rest. I should have mentioned that in the problem, but I'll say it now. We're starting from rest. The final speed is what I'm solving for. Acceleration, we just found it's 25, which is obviously going to help us solve this problem now. The time I said was 5 seconds, and delta x I have no idea, nor do I care, because now I have enough variables where I can find vf, and I just have to use the kinematic equation that does not have displacement delta x in it. And that's going to be this one, v final equals v initial plus at. Very simple. So v final is equal to 0 plus 25 times 5. 25 times 5 is 125. So the final speed is 125 meters per second. And that's it for that one. So we're going to do one more. This one is going to be harder because I'm going to be pulling up at an angle this time. So this time, let's say my mass is 10 kilograms and I am pulling upwards at an angle. Let's say that angle is 26 degrees and I'm gonna be pulling with the force of let's say 80 Newtons. And the two questions I have for this one is once again, what's the acceleration? And number two, I wanna find the normal force. So the good news is the problem starts out largely the same. We start out with a free body diagram. The one force is already given. I also have gravity, mg pointing down, a normal force pointing straight up perpendicular to the surface. Again, we're assuming no friction. The problem would have to tell us if we had to worry about friction. And so that's it, only these three forces. Now, this is something that we have to do for this problem that we did not have to do for the last problem. This 80 Newtons, since it's at an angle, we need to split it up in terms of its X and Y components, and that involves drawing a right triangle. The hypotenuse is 80, the angle is 26 degrees. And now if I wanna find the X and Y component, I gotta use Sokotoa, our favorite. So first, let's say I wanna solve for X, that's gonna be cosine, because it's the adjacent leg. So in other words, cosine 26 degrees is equal to adjacent X over hypotenuse 80 multiply both sides by 80, and x equals 80 cosine 26 degrees. I can plug that in the calculator to see what I get, and we'll get 
0.9, and that's newtons because it still is a force. Now if I want to find the y component, very simple. It's obviously going to be sine this time because it's the opposite leg. So sine 26 equals y over 80. Multiply both sides by 80. Looks like we get 80 times sine 26 degrees. Again, I plug this in my calculator and I'll get 35.1 and that's newtons. Now what I like to do after I get these components, I like to redraw my free body diagram now with the components. So I still have mg going down. I still have a normal force pointing up. And now I have this x, this 71.9 pointing to the right and a 35.1 Newton force pointing up. Yes, I have two forces pointing up. That is perfectly okay, does not matter. And now since I'm solving for acceleration first, and I'm assuming the box is not moving up or down because that wouldn't make any sense. It means that I'm gonna be doing F net X. The box is moving in the X direction only. Remember, it's the forces to the right minus the forces to the left. So it's just gonna be 71.9 minus zero. Again, I'm not even gonna write minus zero. Equals mass times acceleration. This time the mass was 10. So 71.9 equals 10 A. Divide by 10, acceleration is 7.19 and again, the units are meters per second squared. That's it for the acceleration. Now, if I wanna find the normal force, what's the equation for normal force? Trick question, normal force does not have an equation. Usually normal force is equal to just mg, but since we have this additional 35.1 pointing up, it is no longer going to be just mg. So if we wanna find the normal force, this is what I recommend we do. I'm gonna say F net in the y direction is equal to all the forces pointing up minus the forces pointing down, and that's equal to mass times acceleration. I have two forces pointing up, Fn and 35.1. I'm gonna add them together, Fn plus 35.1. And then minus the force pointing down, that's mg, the force of gravity. And then we set that equal to ma. But since that acceleration is zero in the y direction, because again, we're not moving up or down, that acceleration is zero, and it means I have Fn plus 35.1 minus mg just equals zero. Now if I want to solve for Fn, the normal force, I just have to figure out what m times g is, the weight. Well, the mass was 10, so 10 times g is always 9.8 equals zero, and Fn plus 35.1. And now it's just a very simple algebra problem. If I combine these two things, I can do it in my calculator. Then I get minus 62.9 equals zero. Add 62.9 to both sides, and that's gonna be my answer, 62.9 Newtons. Here's one more question for you. Is this normal force heavier or lighter than it was before without that extra component pointing up? To easily find that out, I would say the normal force before would have been just m times g without any pulling forces on it which meant it would have been 10 times 9.8, which means the normal force originally was 98 Newtons, meaning it went down. And that makes sense because looking back at the original picture, we can think of this force, this 80 Newton force, as making the box essentially a little bit lighter because we're picking it up a little bit with that component going up. And that's why the normal force is lighter. It's 62.9 Newtons now. And those are some basic force problems to get you started on your physics journey. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.